Today, a newly available set of tall, systematic tripod legs. They're my new favorite tripod legs for my fluid head system. And not only do I think they're better than the old legs that I've been using, they're also significantly cheaper. Well, hey everybody, it's Hudson. Welcome to this week's Approach in the Scene. It's one I've really been looking forward to doing for quite a long time. And before I jump in and I tell you about this new tall set of legs that I've got and, and how it came about that they're being produced and why I love them so much, I just wanna thank everyone who's been supporting this channel. Remind everyone that there's an index table of contents in the video description to jump to the parts of the video that you're the most interested in, as well as this cool kind of scrubber line if you run your mouse or your finger along the, the video timeline. So if you click the video description or show more, depending on your platform, you can jump around and watch or rewatch any section that you like. And I just wanna thank everyone for subscribing, for liking, for sharing these videos, and your support of this growing channel, it just makes all the difference. And I also wanna remind everybody, I'm be talking about a bunch of gear in here, don't be worried about taking notes. If you click on that show more or that video description, there'll be links to all of these products, clickable links, those links help me out if you use them. Uh, and also links to my gear page where I'm constantly updating the gear that I use. So, a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, I did this video on this ultra light little kind of my style of travel tripod system, a pan and tilt head from Acrotech put on top of this ultra light Leo photo uh, tripod. The whole thing weighs less than four pounds and it gets to eye level with a built in leveling adapter. Love the thing, and I was really impressed with both Acrotech and Leo Photo's quality and the, the, the just energy that they're putting into building the best quality product possible. I was really blown away by both companies and I've enjoyed working with them. And I had a discussion with Leo Photo about, you know, I've been using these really expensive tall Gitzo legs for a long time. And I know I put videos out and I put recommendations out for these really tall tripod legs. And I, some people say, well, why would I need a tall tripod leg? But think about that situation where you're on a hillside and you set your tripod legs up and you want to throw that third leg out, but it makes your whole tripod fall down the hill and you wind up with your tripod down at your waist instead of up at eye level. You know, that one leg being able to send out to make the tripod tall, or you're up in a situation where you want to look down on a scene and you can use a step ladder. Or, you know, there's a situation, I was photographing a beautiful cityscape where there's trees that are kind of low and being able to hop up on a seawall and throw one leg way down to the pavement below and be standing up above everything and shoot over the trees to the skyline really made all the difference. I got a different image than anybody else there just by virtue of having such a tall tripod. Um, so, you know, I talked to them about, you know, why aren't you making something to compete with that? And they were interested, and it's actually something they've been thinking about, and I think I stirred them to a little bit of action. They said, it's gonna be coming your way. I got the prototype uh, not very long ago, and I know that there's stock of these things ready to go, and I'm just blown away by what they built. I'm gonna show you a number of features that I think are better. This thing is literally almost half the price, and the system that I've got, there's a, also a systematic leveling adapter that goes in that's a new, a totally new design that I just adore. It's super cool, it's simpler than what I've been recommending before, cheaper. Um, so I'm gonna show you a few things that I think are better about this tripod system than the other, and then I'll talk a little bit about how I take a new tripod and apply some grease to specific points and protect that tripod from damage before I take it out and get rough with it in the field. So. Let's talk first about what I think is, is better about it. For one thing, the older tripod I've been using, if I measure it, is about 78 and a half inches when using a half ball leveling adapter like I've recommended. The new one from Leo Photo, the LM324CL, which I'm gonna give you links to all this stuff, when you use this cool new leveling adapter, 81 inches, so it's taller. The second thing is, it's lighter, and I'll prove that here in a second. All right, so I'm ready here, I got these two collapsed. You can see that without the leveling adapter difference, they're, they're almost identically sized. I actually think that the Leo Photo one might be slightly lower without its systematic uh, head put in there. They're very, very similar in height. But when I, I go to weigh the two of them, 
Let's zero out my little travel scale here. And the Gitzo on my scale with its half balls weighing in at 5.6 pounds. Now there's maybe 0.15 pounds of, of road bicycle cork grip tape. Road bikers are notorious for being weight conscious. So those things, each one of those legs is wrapped with maybe 0 0.05 pound. Let's call it 0 .1, 1 .0 All right, now let's weigh the Leo Photo with its leveling adapter. 4.4 pounds. So we're talking a pound lighter once I wrap this with grip tape. That's significant. We're talking about 20% lighter almost. And the machining on this thing is just nothing short of beautiful. Now the other cool thing, you know, this leveling adapter, it fits into a systemic system like the Gitzo or the Leo Photo. And you can loosen the top of this head, either one of these tripods. You can loosen, there's a little lock piece. And you can put a flat plate on there you can put a bowl like I've got on the Gitzo, or you can put this cool new leveling system that Leo Photos come out with. You torque it back on there, lock it down, and when you loosen it, it gives you 30 degrees, 15 in each direction, of leveling ability just built in, along with just a little bit more elevation. It's as simple as twisting those little wings. The other cool thing about it is that when you open the legs up, there's no handle to keep you from getting perfectly level to the ground. And it has the same kind of automatic snap lock detents that the Gitzo has with its mechanism. So pretty identical in that regard. So weight wise, significantly lighter. Price wise, significantly cheaper. You take a look at the link. This one's coming in at, I don't know, $540, something like that. This one's close to $900 if you find a deal. The other thing about it is that the, the mechanism for activating the systematic portion of this, on the Gitzo, you have to sort of push the cam in and twist it a half turn, and then it blocked by the tripod itself in order to get that out of there. <clears throat> so, and its lock is nowhere near as nicely machined either, and the, the type of bowl that I prefer for this doesn't even have a locking ring. It gives it more play. This one, you get all the play without having any locking system whatsoever. The neat thing is that they designed their little twist cam for opening and closing the systematic system so that it can just keep spinning around in a circle. You, don't, you just press it in, and you can start twisting it to loosen. You don't have to do half turns to loosen or tighten. That's just a nice little feature in my mind. Now let's talk about what comes with each of these tripods. The Gitzo doesn't come with a bowl, it comes with a flat plate, no bag, comes with some uh, flexible feet and rubberized feet. You gotta buy rock claws separately. The Leo Photo comes with some really nice rubber feet. It comes with this beautiful bag. The Gitzo comes with no bag. And every little detail in this sort of blows my mind. Like, the fact they add this little extra bit of fabric where the bag goes over your shoulder to just take a little, to distribute the weight a little more equally on your shoulder. It's really nicely reinforced force ballistic nylon. Uh, it has a little pocket inside that when you open it up, you're gonna find it comes with both the 75 millimeter bowl. If you did wanna use a bowl adapter, it comes with a top flat plate and it comes with this little zipper pocket that has, you know, a small set of spikes for working in the sand. I prefer bigger spikes, but at least it comes with a set of spikes and a whole tool kit with every Allen wrench it might need along with this really cool multi-tool um, that's got a whole bunch of stuff in it, including a bottle opener, just in case you're in a pinch. All that fits in the bag and this bag will fit the legs, the leveling adapter and the fluid head. So. If you use this leveling adapter, which I'm linking, screw your fluid head on here. One of the things that I truly adore about the way this whole thing works, you don't, you know, don't over torque this. With the Gitzo, I used a half ball leveling adapter where if you take the handle off the ball, underneath the ball, half ball, there are three little set screws that you can drive up into the bottom of the fluid head or whatever head you're using. With the Leo Photo, they've made it even simpler. They've got three little set screws here 
that you just give a turn, give a turn, and give a turn, and boom, you're locked in. The other really nice thing is that the Leo Photo leveling adapter has this just beautiful bubble level right on the side of it that you can easily look down on without craning to look inside the fluid head to see whether it's level or not. So as you level it, there's a nice sort of pop out leveling adapter. That's something I've got on my Sackler head that I use for these videos in the studio that I really miss when I'm out in the field. One other quality difference is the little barrel adjusters, the locks on the legs that lock the different sections that you, you go ahead and twist them and then they open and close and then you twist to lock. The Gitzo had this beautiful design that I loved when I first got it where it's got these metal barrel locks with a rubberized coating around them. Well, the problem is that when they get in salt water, that rubberized coating breaks down and the minute it snaps, it just pops off in your hand. And so I've actually had to gaff tape the lower section's rubber ring back around and it's not as snug and nice feeling as it once was. The Leo Photo by contrast has a little bit more old school kind of kind of hard one piece rubberized knurled barrel adjuster on there, uh, which I they, they seem really familiar to me. They feel like the, the Gitzos from a generation ago that were just bomb proof. Uh, you know, and obviously I haven't tested it long enough to say it's bomb proof in all conditions, but it just has that feel of something that's going to endure a little bit longer to me. Um, so for me, between just the quality of machining on this head, the lighter weight, and the amount of accessories that they include for the price, and the simplicity of this leveling adapter, as well as the ability to get flush with the ground, I'm relatively blown away. I've heard a few people after I did my video on the little Leo Photo tripod uh, say that they've had problems in the past with Leo Photo's bushings and the legs, and I, I took these apart. I, I know that Leo Photo has really, really upped their game with their latest models and that they're, they're looking to kind of take over that more affordable but really high quality tier of tripods. And I took them apart and I've taken all my tripods apart. And I gotta say that the bushings that are in the Leo Photo legs are about the same grade of plastic as the bushings in the Gitzos or the Enduros that I have. But they're a single piece that kind of locks in place and it seems like it would be harder for them to break or to get lost in the shuffle as you're cleaning them out. So for me, they don't look, they, they look actually a little bit better than the bushings that I'm used to, to having to replace. Uh, particularly in Enduro, I have had some problems with Enduro's bushings and had to get replacement sets. So, let me talk a little bit about what I do when I get a brand new tripod. I take cork bicycle grip tape. I have to actually have one more piece of this on order to, to fully wrap these legs. But the minute that I get a new tripod, I wrap the legs, I use a little gaff tape at the top and the bottom to lock the cork bicycle grip tape in. And again, like I said, bicycle road bikers are the ultimate kind of weight weenies. Uh, we mountain bikers are renowned and self-professed weight weenies. You know, we measure things on a gram scale. Road bikers are even more so. So I use really high quality cork grip tape that those guys use for their handlebars. It's ultra light. And I wrap each leg and it feels really nice in the hand. Handles being out in water, you know, these are made for handlebars on, on performance bicycles. And it keeps it nice and warm in the winter. It's not that cold carbon, it's not slippery. And it also protects the legs if they're on the outside of a backpack or bashing through brush. Uh, it just keeps them looking nice. And it also provides that, that upper portion. I leave a little gap and I put my stone bag right there where the, the top of that is. So it kind of gives it a place to grip and, and hold in place instead of sliding up and down that carbon leg and removing any decals or markings on there. So I'll wrap these up with cork grip tape as soon as that extra piece comes in. I'll hang a stone bag from it and I'll put links to all this stuff in the video description. Uh, the other thing I do, you know, I've already got rock claws on here. I have some rock claws that Leo Photo is making. They look just as nice as the really right stuff ones for significantly cheaper. I haven't tested them in salt water yet, so there's a little disclaimer on that. And the really right stuff ones don't really rust, but I'm going to go on an adventure with some mountain streams with these really soon. Before I put these stainless steel feet or stainless steel spikes in these aluminum tripod 
sockets. I want to put some synthetic grease on them. I use this bicycle grease. I, I love working on my own bikes uh, and, and on my cars to a certain extent too. I usually put gloves on, I get a paper towel, I'll grease the threads of this, rub it in with those gloved fingers. I'll do all of them at the same time. Just get a little fine bit of grease on there and thread it back in. I actually had a, a student recently have a set of stainless steel feet almost lock bond into his uh, carbon fiber tripods aluminum uh, leg and he barely got it back out. He had to use a vise. So he reminded me to remind you, make sure you grease that interface. And I really like the super loop stuff. You don't have to get the grease gun. I have the grease gun because there are certain fittings on my bike that require the grease gun. And then I also completely take apart the leg. I don't need to pull it all the way out, but I grease those threads that the barrel adjuster is going to so that water can't seep in through those threads when you're, when you're working out underwater. Sometimes the the first leg gets all the way underwater, and particularly in salt water, I don't want it going through those threads while they're even while they're locked down. So I, I put grease on all the threads essentially, um, and that's essentially what I do. Occasionally, after you've been working in salt water, whatnot, I like to take the, the legs apart by completely unscrewing those barrels, rinse them off, wipe them down with a rag, let them dry in the sun, put new grease on those threads, and put them back together. I think that that's good, just general tripod maintenance. Um, the last thing I'd say that I think is just, I, I just love it. I'm really, really, really excited to have an even lighter weight tripod system from a brand I'm enjoying working with, with a bag like this that you can toss in your check duffel where you don't even have to pull the head off. And it's just really nicely engineered start to finish. So I'm excited. I think for those of you who've been holding off because that tall tripod is just a little too expensive or even just a little too heavy, you know, I'm going to just show you what this weighs in out before I sign off. We've got um, a final weighing with the fluid head, the Kirk bridge assembly, and the rotating Arca Swiss clamp and that leveling adapter I'll put on here in a 81 inch tripod, Mondo tall, 6.7 pounds, boom. It's a, a really a new paradigm for an 81 inch tall systematic tripod with a leveling adapter. I mean, I, I'm so stoked to have this thing. I think for those of you that have been holding out for something a little cheaper or a little lighter, the time is now. I really hope you'll, you'll, you'll check it out because it's, it's really an impressive piece of carbon and metal. All right, so thanks so much to everybody for, for liking the, and sub, the videos, subscribing to the channel, sharing with your friends, using my links, which really helps me out. Um, we're doing office hours on August, let's see, 11th, 18th. We're gonna be skipping the 11th, but we'll be doing a free office hour on Tuesday, August 18th to get together and talk photography and do open Q&A with my good friends, Rick, Woody, and Darren, uh, and the whole crew on Zoom. It'll be live streamed on YouTube as well. Uh, we had an awesome office hours Tuesday where we talked about our assignment to photograph the full moon in the last bit of daylight at the, at the turn of this month of August. and some amazing images in the gallery that everybody submitted. So check it out, sign up at my office hours, sign up. Uh, it's really a lot of fun and it gives us all a bit of community in this time where it's tough to get out traveling to places that we want to go doing workshops and, and the like. So a chance to get together with other photographers and talk about that thing that we're so passionate about, photography. And on that note, you know, this channel is completely driven by what you all want to hear about and learn more about. So please, you know, when you sign up for the office hours, submit a question. Uh, that drives content both in the office hours as well as approaching the scene. Email me, leave comments on the YouTube site. That's how I know where to drive the channel. It's really all about all of you. So thanks so much. We'll see you next week.